usually the kind of person that can really fit into my schedule of making art every single day. That's why in my productivity system video, I sort of divided the first half of the week to art making stuff from working in my sketchbook to oil painting to actually live streaming my art process. And the later half of the week, I have a lot more responsibilities. I have freelance clients that have deadlines every single week on Thursday or Friday, and I have sponsors to arrange, admin stuff to work on, Patreon to handle, and it's sort of a lot on my plate that's completely separate from art stuff. So, so I don't want you guys to have the perception as an independent artist, I get to paint and draw all the time. That's not really the reality. There is a lot of business stuff that is factored into my schedule, and I actually really enjoy the business stuff. I find it really fun and like a really good puzzle for my more analytic brain to kind of gnaw on. And we do a lot of the business stuff in this video from being interviewed for a podcast to even starting my own podcast. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about the painting that we are currently working on. What I am starting right now is a Monet study. So Monet is a very famous impressionist painter. He has just some absolutely gorgeous paintings that I was lucky enough to see in person at the Boston Museum of Fine Art. And this wasn't one of those pieces, but it was in the same series as the pieces that I got to go see. So it was really fun to try and work through this study, but as I was working on it, I realized that I didn't approach it in the same way that Monet probably did. I didn't look enough at the painting and try to break it down enough when I was just starting. So a lot of the process that you guys are going to see me work on in this painting was sort of muddling through it and trying to get to a point where the painting made sense and even like sort of had the same spirit as the original. I think as a painter right now, what I'm really like struggling with is just a tightness to my work. I don't have the same loose, expressive brush strokes or nature to my work that a lot of these impressionists do, and I need to figure out how to loosen up and have that quality more in my work, and that's still very much a thing that I'm working on. But I don't love the way this Monet painting turned out. I think there's a lot of things that I would do differently from starting with a much more desaturated base of colors. I go in with a really, really saturated pinks and yellows and oranges and blues, and I really regret that choice going into it. I think I added far too much contrast and far too much saturation to these first couple layers, and the latter half of this process was me trying to walk back from that ledge, and I wasn't entirely successful, I think. Another thing that I also learned was that I didn't love this painting, actually. Like, not just the painting that I'm working on, but the original painting. Like, there's this really interesting effect that I have sometimes observed where I really enjoy looking at a thing, but then when I try and recreate it, I don't like it as much anymore. <laughs> like, the really harsh differences between this very light sky and the very light water that is a reflection of the sky and these, like, and how the transition from this light sky and this light water to the very vague and hazy blue-green foliage is way too stark for me. I just, I didn't enjoy working on it, and those edges, I couldn't lose them the same way that Monet is able to have lost edges in his work. And I think that, and I think my experience sort of speaks to how you need to be really selective when it comes to the master studies that you work on. This Monet painting, for example, had a lot of that looseness that I really want to develop in my own work, but I should have paid more attention to the value structure and the composition of the painting, because I don't think that I want my work to look quite like this, if that makes sense. I want my work to have the same looseness, but when it comes to color and the transition between that very, very light sky and that hazy blue-green foliage, I feel like that transition is a little bit too harsh for my taste. So I need to work on so I need to work on really finding master studies that perfectly sort of symbolize the criteria and the characteristics that I want in my work. And that's still a skill that I'm developing. So 
I know that you guys really want that master study video, but you're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer while I gain those skills because I really, really want you guys to come away from that video with a lot of information and I just don't think that I'm there yet. So this was all of the footage that I captured for Monday. So let's go and talk with Tuesday, Kelsey, and she'll tell you what she's gonna be doing for the rest of the week. Good morning. This is the outfit for today. <sighs> Pretty basic. Got my sleeveless big bud press turtleneck in like the brown color, which I love. It is so comfy. I got this cardigan um, like a year ago when it was on sale at Aritzia. I love like the, the sleeves and how like it has like this nice like just cut to it. It's really pretty. And then these jeans are Levi's. Um, I thrifted them a while ago. They've lasted all throughout college with me. So anyway, um, let me catch you guys up really quick because we have had a little bit of an exciting time. So I did sign that sponsorship deal with Koji, which is great and really exciting. And I got another sponsorship offer this morning from like a art subscription box company. We'll see if that ends up working out. And we started this painting over here. Let me just grab it for you guys. It's close enough to the original, actually. Like, believe it or not, it's like pretty close to the Monet painting, but I think the, like, the transition from sky to the blue, like this very pale yellow sky to the blue, it just feels way too abrupt for me. I'm gonna have to make some intermediary colors i think like blend that out a little bit so that it feels like more of a gradual natural transition but we will be working on that in today's stream because i will be streaming today at 1 30. the new artist proofs or the new prints for the mini prints here on patreon arrived and i don't like them <laughs> Um, I ordered artist proofs, I sent them new files, and they, there are, there are a couple mistakes. There are a couple mistakes, and I think they're passable enough that I'm gonna send them out, but I'm still not 100% pleased with the quality. Um, I'm using Catprint, which is a lovely company, but I, I don't know, I probably did something wrong. It's probably my fault. But there was a distinct decrease in the print quality as far as I could tell, and I was not happy with that, and the colors did not, were not corrected as I would like. Um, this is the print. It looks pretty good from a distance, but like, it's not particularly sharp. Like, there are some edges, especially like over here, that I think could be much sharper. And this one I think is an improvement. This is on a different paper. This is the felt paper. As you can see, like, especially like over here, there's some loss in quality, I think. Like, it's just not as sharp as the original. And the original looks much greener too, which I noticed and I've somehow not been able to replicate so far in the proofs. But anyway, um, I have 25 of each of these. So I only have a couple, I have 25 of each of these, and I only have a few people on the mini print tier, so what I might end up doing is first opening up the shop to um, everyone on my Patreon, and then doing a round of, like, just selling these off at a discounted rate, because I am not super happy with these, so I will not be charging people on the mini print tier for March, just because I want to take the time to really improve print quality and do some color correction stuff and just like get a set of prints that I am really happy with and like figure out like what mistakes I'm making etc because all of this stuff is very much still new to me and I really want to like release prints that I'm really proud of because I don't want to sell like subpar replications of my work you know what I mean so anyway um I'm not overjoyed with these but it is a step for sure um definitely a step in the right direction and now that I'm looking at them like I do kind of like the felt paper 
I think it helps add some texture and a little bit of detail where like the just like the matte prints don't have like these are a little bit reflective as well and these are like a little bit more matte I think but they have like just a little bit of texture like can you see the detail on the paper like right there like that texture can you see that whereas this is just smooth this has just that, that little bit of detail all throughout I think this paper will work really really well when it comes to replicating my oil paintings I'm very excited for that because I really do want to offer prints of a couple of my pieces like like this one that we worked on on stream a little while ago I really want to offer prints of this guy would like to offer prints of this guy I think this guy is adorable it's very rough, very different from the other painting in terms of like style. I also completed it a little while ago in comparison, so I think I have leveled up a little bit in terms of skills, but I would love to offer prints of this. And I think this would replicate really well on that felt paper. So I need to take pictures of both of these guys sometime this week and order artist proofs for those. And yeah, I have a ton of stuff. The thing about like scaling my business and actually starting to launch my online shop and everything is that I just have so much stuff to do and like things to get like I need to think about like getting one of those label printer machines I need to think about like more packaging if I want to offer square prints because the other the other painting that I want to offer prints of is, is square format and I don't want to offer like really tiny prints of it so there are just so many things to think about <laughs> so many things to think about it's a really exciting time though like I'm really, really grateful that I'm in this position to be able to start thinking about all these things because it is really exciting and I am incredibly, incredibly optimistic about the future and I've never been this excited before about my career, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And it's all thanks to you guys. So anyway, prints of this guy coming soon. <laughs> um, hopefully, fingers crossed. Wednesday. It's about 10 a.m. and this is the outfit of the day. Same shirt yesterday. I also slept in this just so you know. Uh, same shirt yesterday. We got some sweatpants in my favorite color and this very cozy like rusty orange-ish like burnt sienna cardigan. <sighs> yesterday I was optimizing for cuteness but today we are optimizing for coziness so yeah. Um, a little bit of an update, I guess. I said and I thought that I was going to leave yesterday's stream public, but I was watching the VOD or like the replay and the audio was just not good. <laughs> and this has been a problem for my streams because I can't get my on-camera microphone that I'm using right now to record this audio to be recognized in OBS, my streaming software. Like it worked in Streamlabs OBS, but I can't figure out how to make it work in regular OBS, and I don't know why. Um, I was thinking about getting like an external USB mic for voiceovers anyway, so it seemed like a good opportunity or like an excuse, I guess, to get a new USB mic. So I've ordered an Elgato Wave 1 um, with the shock mount and the pop filter. It ended up being around $175-ish with tax and shipping and everything. Um, so it's, you know, it's an investment for sure. And I'm optimistic that I will, I mean, I, I know for a fact that I will definitely be able to use it like all the time. Sorry, I'm getting emails. Let me just turn that off. Um, 
but yeah i think i think it'll work well i think it'll be worthwhile um but yeah so hopefully going forward the streams will have better audio i know that like the streams have been kind of rough for the cat like all of the streams so far have been kind of rough and I'm trying to improve them with like each iteration. I'm spending time trying to improve the stream, figuring out like, okay, like what went well last time? What can I do this time? So this past stream yesterday, I tried to incorporate a little more structure into the streams, like more changes, um, like a heavier intro, sort of trying to make it a little bit snappier. And yeah, but anyway, I talked about yesterday how I wanted to work more on my sketchbook because of that art with M video, and I wanna I wanna be true to that. I didn't end up waking up earlier than usual, but I do want to work in my sketchbook a little bit this morning, and um, yeah, I think it'll be a good time. So let's get started. Devoom, which is the company behind this very, very cute little portable pixel art speaker, was super kind to offer to send me this for review and a brief mention, so I thought I would give them a little bit of a shout out because I really loved this speaker, actually. You can see me as I unbox it, just like marvel at how cute the packaging is, and not only does it have a great sound to it for such a small little speaker, but they have a whole pixel art community app for your mobile device that lets you like custom select what art you want on the front facing screen of the speaker. And they have just super cute little noises and mechanical keys, and you can actually play games on this too. So. I'll let you guys marvel at how cute the speaker sounds for a second. Just the clicking and the little boot up noise I found absolutely adorable. And on Devoom's app, there are so many options for customizability. You can even make your own little pixel art creation to put on your speaker. And yeah, it's definitely a thing that you guys are going to be seeing in my studio for a long time. So thank you again to Devoom for sending this over to me, and I will link their product down in the description.
Okay, so I gave up my sketchbook, did a little bit of watercolor testing, and um, decided that I didn't want to work in it anymore for right now, for today, not like ever, but um, I decided that we would go back to oil painting because that is, of course, the goal for this week. And I want to try like a new method of underpainting, basically. So here is what we've got so far. This is like the full underpainting. So all of this is thinned out a lot with um, this. It is lavender spike oil from Trusty Classical Studios. And I have my palette in this Masterson like airtight palette container now. So it helps keep my paints fresh for longer. And I have our reference photo over here in Photoshop. And I'm also watching Kit Boba's stream right now. So this is what it looks like very much more saturated of course right now and we'll have to you know put in a bunch of dark values but i was looking at monet's work while we were working on the other study that we were working on yesterday and monday and i was looking at it and i was looking at it and i, I was pretty sure that i started my painting much differently than he would have started his i think he probably did something pretty similar to this with like a very colored, like finished looking underpainting with all of the colors in place or like something similar to this. So I thought we would give this a go and I'm hoping that this will help me just like be a little bit looser because I don't have to cover as much ground. So my, uh, my hope at least or my intention is that this will be an interesting experiment to see if I can get my brush strokes to be a little bit more expressive. We'll see what happens. Um, no promises, of course, obviously, but I am um, I'm interested to see where this goes. And you're saying there's no overdraft. Is that right? Hundred dollar. Well, I don't see anything yet, madam. There is no overdraft fee, madam. If there are any fees, we will leave it off because you have not made any transactions. We just see there is a refund request from Geeksport, so we are allowing it to send them a refund request. All right? Can we do that? I talk to somebody else, please? And why is that? I just don't think you and I are communicating very well. So I would like to speak with a manager or well, I, I, someone I have, else who can help see, you. I have resolved all your queries. You asked me about your account balance. And if you have anything else yeah, I do have you some other questions. I'm concerned about some things that might be going on with my account. And I would like to talk to someone else in the fraud department, please. Just a minute. Thank you. So, I just got out of the shower and we're gonna have some uh, cookie dough for breakfast. I mean, it's a couple days ago. It is King Arthur Flowers cookie dough recipe. It's really good. It's really good. It has some almond extract in it. So it has like a little extra flavor to it. Legit, like nothing could stop me from eating raw cookie dough. Nothing, no, no force in the world that has been documented by mankind could prevent me from eating raw cookie dough. Like you understand me? Anyway, it is it is a dessert for breakfast kind of morning, mostly because like this always happens to me. But in the beginning of the week, I'm like coasting. You know, like I have very manageable to do lists. Like everything feels very nice, very straightforward. I can like spend time painting, doing whatever. It's like more relaxed. And then the end of the week is really where I have more responsibilities kick in. Like where I have to send scripts for sponsors. I did this morning while I was in bed. It's almost 1 p.m. now. So most of the morning I've spent just like 
chilling in bed and doing some work um, on my laptop, but I want to check it with the vlog, obviously, and I also have a video to edit that I'm done leave files for now, and I have to have that done by this evening, hopefully. And then we also have some coming over for dinner um, that's staying for the night um, when I'm Drake's friends, and so they're gonna take the couch, and so, yeah, luckily they're arriving pretty late. And I don't think they'll be here for like the day tomorrow, so I'll have the apartment to myself still, but yeah. Um, I always feel like very relaxed at the beginning of the week, and then the stress really starts to creep in later on in the week. And it's just like, I wish that wasn't the case. I wish I had like a more balanced thing, but I like, I just, it's just a fact of life that I have more responsibilities as the week goes on, so. I also have a video of Patreon that I have to film, like today or tomorrow. Al, Little Star Nerd and I, we are like doing some initial tests for a podcast together and that is happening this afternoon so I had to do a little test for that and test out like this new software um, that's good for remote podcasting that I want to try and then I'm also being interviewed for a podcast on Friday. It's a very small podcast, I will share the link to the episode when it goes live in the community tab but it's like, it's like a very small podcast, we're just like getting their feet off the ground, I figured I would help out and um, do an interview for them. So yeah, we're doing that and I have that video um, for Patreon and I have the video to edit for my client and yeah, it's just a lot of stuff, lots of stuff. And I am releasing two videos next week because I'm doing a featured video for Koji. So that you're gonna be seeing, you're gonna be seeing this video and then you're also going to be seeing the Koji video on Friday. So this video should go up live on Monday and then the Koji video on Friday. So anyway, yeah, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. And I ordered that USB mic to improve the quality of the streams that I mentioned earlier. So that has to arrive before I stream again because I will no longer tolerate bad audio quality on streams, okay? So going forward, if you avoided the streams because the audio quality has been garbage, it will hopefully be garbage no longer. Oh. He's scratching the scratching post. You wanna say hello? There we go. Hello. Would you like to say hello to the camera? Oh no, we're squirmy. We're a squirmy boy. His eyes always look very green on camera. Sometimes in real life, but more often he has like, like very pale blue eyes. Okay, fine. Yeah. You're a good boy. We're not gonna look at the camera at all, huh? Just get to see the back of his head. Maybe the side profile if you're very lucky. Yeah, oh, we got a glimpse of eye there. There we go. Are you gonna look at the camera a little bit? The people really like you, you know. And they keep asking to put more of you in the videos. They're like, I wanna see more of the cat. And you're just kinda only interested in bothering me when I'm live streaming. You like to communicate with your fans live on air. Isn't that right? Oh, look at the tail. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, but it wasn't focused. It wasn't focused. Yeah, you're kind of interested in them. Oh, you got it. There you go. There you go. Oh, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. <laughs> yes, you're perfect. <laughs> oh, that's, you're you're so cute, buddy. You're so cute. Good. Yeah, it's very good. So officially, we are co-hosting a podcast. Like, I'm not yeah. gonna be. Okay, cool. Love that. Do we want to start with like a, like, are we starting with like a trial period or do you just want to like start and just see what happens? Like, as in like we're starting. I think we could just start and see what happens. Like, okay. perfect. Whatever. I, I agree. <laughs> I don't anticipate How? like hating you in the next six months. Like, I think, I think it'll be good. <laughs> that was on my calendar actually. So there might be a deadline. <laughs> well, shit. I, I had mine as like a year from now, but if we're on an accelerated timeline, I'm going to have to do like some rearranging of my calendar. Okay, so I just got done talking to um, Al, aka Little Starnard, and we're gonna start a podcast. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're designing the logo. We're talking about like booking guests and stuff. And yeah, I'm gonna start um, 
I'm gonna create an email for us and then a second YouTube channel and we're gonna do it. And it's, wow, sudden. But also it's been in the works for a while, so hopefully not that sudden. Probably sudden for you guys, but I've been talking about starting a podcast and like been thinking about podcasting for a while and I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good time. Um, I have not made any art today. I have not oil painted at least at all today. So it's, what time is it? Close to six, yeah, it's 5.43, so it's a quarter to six. Um, if I'm going to maintain what we've done so far in this video, I better get cracking at it, I better get painting, but I do wanna get some logo stuff finished first. <sighs> Good morning. Um, it's Friday. I did not end up painting at all yesterday. Um, it was still a good day though. Like Al and I, we talked a lot about the podcast that we're gonna be starting that I mentioned last night. And I've been doing like freelance video editing stuff. So it did not end up happening, but today for sure, we are going to finish the painting that we started on Wednesday. And I think maybe work in our sketchbook for a little bit. Um, we'll see, I might continue the vlog tomorrow just to wrap things up a little bit but yeah i was supposed to have a furniture delivery come by tomorrow morning or i was supposed to have a furniture delivery arrive this morning um it did not end up happening like they called drake who's currently at work and they were like we're here but apparently they had a very thick accent and we're not super understandable and you have to have this thing called a coi which is, I think, a certificate of insurance to deliver things to, like, high-rise buildings and stuff in New York City. That's, like, kind of the standard. And they did not have this, apparently, even though we're pretty sure that we sent everything out and we're, like, we thought we had all the stuff. And I guess, like, somewhere in the line of communication, just things didn't end up getting done that should have been done. So we'll have to reschedule again. This is the second time we've had to reschedule. Uh, so... Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, the couch repair person still has not been here because of the elevator issue. Um, the buildings in my, sorry, <laughs> the buildings in my elevator, the elevator in my building, um, the elevators in my building have not been very operational. They've been very on and off. Um, it's a problem. It is a known problem. It is a very frustrating problem. It took me three weeks to do the laundry. Um, yeah, but... <sighs> It's a little bit of a frustrating time. Um, I will not get that. I'm not gonna let that get to me though because I do wanna be productive today. So in my schedule, Fridays are flex days, days to sort of do things that I find fulfilling or to wrap up work that I had left over from the rest of the week. So this vlog is sort of work that I had left over from the rest of the week. So we were working on this vlog, of course. And I also want to unbox some new art supplies that I just received, which would be a good time and maybe test those out a little bit in my sketchbook and then wrap up that oil painting. And I think that will um, that will wrap up the day very nicely for us. And then I don't really have a lot of plans for Saturday, um, but Sunday I will be going to a board game cafe with some friends and then we're gonna get tapas after and then I am going to a sea shanty concert. So a very filled Sunday. Um, but the rest of this week and this weekend have been pretty relaxed so far. I haven't had like a lot of like stuff outside the apartment to do. So it'll be kind of a wild ride transitioning from like being cooped up in the apartment all the time to doing lots and lots of stuff on Sunday. So anyway, um, yeah. And with that, I am going to start unboxing those materials that we just got. All right, let's crack open this bad boy, shall we? I'm pretty sure that these should be new brushes, new like watercolor gouache brushes. Lots of paper. And 
here we go. So this is one of the brush packs that I got. This is from Treco, by the way. This is their acrylic brush set, but they're also good for watercolor. They're very pretty. These are the Golden Taclon brushes. They're synthetic. What's interesting is that like these are long handle, which is interesting given like that they're smaller. And then we have these two right here. These are Spectrum liners and they are on a long handle. Whereas all of these are on the short handle and they're golden taclons. We have an angle, a little flat, and a couple of rounds. And then these over here are just larger flats that I ordered extra. Because I figured that I was going to want like larger brushes than these guys and I figured these work really well together as a set. This is what I'm really excited about. This has a bunch of new materials. So I've mentioned before to you guys that I've been wanting to experiment with watercolors more and acrylics actually and I thought that a very specific kind of acrylic would work well for me as an oil painter. all these goodies. So we have some sanding blocks. This is a fine grit and this is a coarse grit one. And two new palette knives. So these right here are some acrylic paints, but they complement this set really well. So this is a set of golden open acrylics. Like the label says, they're slow drying acrylics and I got the landscape set because I figured, you know, I paint a lot of landscapes and this would work really well. And the cover art, wow, that is beautiful. I'm really excited. It comes with this paint thinner. Um, you can also use water. And basically they're just slower drying acrylics. So I figured we'd give these a try eventually, maybe not today, but at some point for sure. And it comes with cadmium yellow primrose, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, manganese blue hue, and sap green hue, as well as titanium white, of course. And to go with that, I got some more just like basic acrylics. This is a neutral gray. I figured this would complement the set pretty well and like because they're such small tubes I like to have convenience colors. And let's see we've got some more in here. Got two more. This is Indian yellow hue just because I really like to use um, like lots of yellows and a burnt sienna because they did not include a brown in this set and I knew for a fact that I was going to want browns in my mixes so yeah I really like the fact that they included a green in like the set itself the sap green I think it'll come in handy a lot as well as they gave us two blues and like two yellow colors so I'm excited and I think the neutral gray will help a lot I'm surprised that these are bigger because I guess I was just not expecting that oh so okay so these are these are three quarters of a fluid ounce, and these are two fluid ounces. I think these were about seven to eight, maybe 10-ish dollars a tube. They were not bad, especially when you compare it to like oil paints and acrylic gouache, like sort of about that same range. So not super expensive by comparison, and you do get like a fair amount of paint. I don't know how well these are going to last in comparison to like gouache and oils, but I'm definitely excited to try these out. And 
before I forget, I also got this set of Kuretake Ganzai Tombi watercolors. These are a Japanese set of watercolors. They're um, very similar to gouache, like a, a more opaque kind of watercolor, but they don't handle quite as matte as gouache. Um, I've used these before. I ended up getting rid of my set because it was a couple years ago that I had one, but uh, yeah, this is a very thorough set. I mean, look at all the greens they included. Let's open this guy up. So from what I remember, these are all really good blues and then these are where your neutrals come in. I ended up really liking these two colors, I think, and wow, they're so clean. We'll definitely do a dedicated video on these guys, I think, just testing them out a little bit and then, ooh, that's nice. So this back right here, I don't know if you guys can see that super well, but it has like opportunity to swatch every one of them and it has a red, a rose matter, rose matter deep, cadmium scarlet, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, olive green, sap green light, sap green, hooker's green, sap green deep, wow so many sap greens, viridian, turquoise green, malachite, ultramarine pale, ultramarine, turquoise blue, indigo, cobalt violet, burnt sienna, and raw umber deep, and black. That is a very nice array of colors. This will be so pretty once it's all swatched, and I love how deep these pans are. Like, for the price, if you want something that's halfway between watercolor and gouache, this is a great, this is a great option. This was pretty affordable too. So anyway, um, that is all the stuff I got. So that is our little haul. We've got some new brushes to play with. I. These are going to be a good time. I'm, I, I can already tell. I'm, I'm excited. Um, especially these flats. These are just gorgeous, gorgeous brushes. Oh, so good. And then we have that Kortaki Gonzai Tombi watercolor gouache set. Um, yeah, I think art materials from all over the world are so fun to play with. Like, there are just so many interesting approaches that different cultures have to different art mediums. And it can be really fun to just explore what other places around the world have to offer, you know what I mean? Yeah, these golden open acrylics, also really exciting. Um, I'm just, it's so good, it's so exciting. Like, being able to be in a position where I can try out new stuff for you guys and like experiment together and just like see where it takes us and just have fun with stuff is just so, so nice. Um, let me guys know which video you wanna see first, the Kuretake Ganze Tombi watercolor video or the golden open acrylics video because I could honestly do either. <laughs> Uh, right away. So let me know in the comments which one you are most interested in and what you think I should cover in that. But yeah, before I jump on that podcast interview in a couple of hours, I really, really need to work on that oil painting. So I'm going to get on my materials and we'll work on that for a little bit.
Okay, well, to give you guys a little bit of an update, I am editing and recording this voiceover on Sunday. It's about 4 p.m.-ish, and I did not get to do any of the really fun things that I wanted to this weekend. So I was supposed to go to that board game cafe with some friends and get tapas at Bocaria, which is a really good tapas place next to Times Square, and we didn't end up being able to do that. I had to do a rain check because the elevators in my building are not working and on Friday night I had to go all the way down and all the way up and I live in a high-rise building on a very high floor I'm not gonna tell you guys how high but high enough that I'm pretty sure I tore a muscle in both of my legs while making the ascent and I'm still feeling it today I can barely walk and it's not a good time. Getting groceries is really difficult right now, getting laundry is really difficult right now. It's definitely like hashtag first world problems, but it is very inconvenient and the building has made zero concessions, so we are still expected to pay the same rent that we were when we first moved in and the elevators were working, so it's pretty ridiculous. I'm trying to figure out like how to negotiate with the building. Um, we don't want to break our lease or move out right now. That would be way too hectic and way too chaotic for both of our schedules. But like, we like this building, we love this apartment. We just want the elevators to work, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's a little bit of a life update, but this painting turned out really well, I think. I'm still working on it. It's not like 100% done yet, but I really love the direction that it's going in. It's loose enough still, and I still have a little bit of some, some detail in there and yeah, it was just, it was really enjoyable to work on this. The footage that you guys are seeing right now was actually from Friday night, right before I had to go all the way down and then all the way back up. So this is, this is pre-leg injury, Kelsey, that you guys are witnessing. Just a happier time all around. Yeah, I'm so excited for the podcast that Al and I are starting. I will link our channel in the comments. It doesn't have anything on it yet, but we're hoping to release our first episode in the middle-ish of March and then do a couple of episodes of just the two of us and then start to bring in guests. I have a whole strategy laid out. I have a whole Notion workspace that I'm building for us. And once I get a good handle on how the podcast channel works, I will probably do a decade tutorial on that as well, just because I really love sharing information with you guys. And podcasting is, I think, going to be really fun and a really good way to build my own audience and expand my business. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting time but we are winding down this studio vlog here. I don't know when I'm going to be finishing this very quick, like, countryside field study, but I'm hoping that you guys will be able to buy prints of it fairly soon in my very first shop update. I don't have an announcement date for that yet. Um, hoping pretty soon, but with the elevator situation, I, I don't want to make any promises, okay? So, anyway, I will see you guys actually... So I will see you guys actually later this week with a extra bonus video. So stay tuned for that and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.